Hi everybody, uh, my name is Howard Long, uh, Golf 6 Lima Victor Bravo is my uh, amateur radio call sign and today I'd like to show you uh, what we call in the FunCube dongle. Um, its uh, reference to FunCube is to do with the low earth orbit satellite launch uh, that's uh, due for some time in the next uh, few months we hope and uh, the dongle aspect of it is that this is a ground station receiver so the idea behind this is, is that any software that you've used on your sound card before, uh, such as for Softrock, for example, that will also work on this. Now, what's the difference between this and Softrock? Well, the difference really here is that uh, this is designed for VHF and UHF and the bottom of the microwave spectrum. This, this covers from around 65 megahertz all the way up to 1.7 gigahertz. Now, of course, this is in a prototype stage, as I'm sure you can see, but the fundamental parts here are, uh, see on the left there, you can see a, a BNC connector, that's your RF in, and you can see towards the right there, there's a uh, USB connector. Uh, okay, if I go, go into this, this device here, this is the biggest device here. This here is a, a PIC32 device. It's, uh, as the name suggests, 32-bit device. Um, we're actually going to look to see if we can maybe use a, uh, a small device in order to cut costs, but the uh, price of this is around about £3 a part in, uh, in quantity. Uh, as you know, it's a bit scary there, 0.4mm pitch soldering there, so I uh, uh, need to be a little careful with the soldering. Now, I'm sorry about the bird's nest here. Uh, there is a reason for that, um, other than I'm not particularly tidy as a constructor. Uh, the main reason is that uh, as I move on to the next device, which is the codec chip, uh, there you go, if I zoom in there, oh, probably it will go out of uh, focus as it did there. Uh, this is a tiny 32 pin uh, device and uh, it's in a QFM package, which means it's got no leads so uh, you have to be pretty careful soldering that. It's uh, one short of a ball grid away ray for soldering. Now I mentioned the um, uh, bird's nest here. Now. Uh, uh, one of the reasons that is, is that actually the boards that I'm using here for the mixed signal devices are called smart boards. Uh, these are very good for uh, prototyping because they have a ground, solid ground plane and uh, you're never more than uh, than about three or four millimeters from being able to put a de decoupling capacitor down, straight down to the ground plane. So they're excellent for uh, prototyping mixed signal. I don't know of any other boards that you can use this easily for uh, breaking out uh, these high density packages uh, but also being able to uh, support the mixed signal capabilities of the devices. So um, you may think well where are all the components here? Well of course we've got the device itself on the top but there's actually uh, probably the majority of the devices are uh, actually sitting underneath the board in order to be able to keep uh, things like decoupling capacitors close, as close to the chip as possible. Now, you might not be able to see that just above there, there's a little uh, 1.8 volt regulator there, which uh, is designed just to, uh, I probably can't see it because it's behind all these wires, if I hopefully move this out around a little bit, you might be able to see just there, there's a little SO23 uh, package, which is my 1.8 volt regulator for the uh, codec. Um, in fact, if you look here, I've actually, uh, there's a little SO2 SOT23 package here is a 3.3 volt regulator with a PIC32. Okay, now this is all fairly sort of standard stuff. You've got a codec just here, and you've got uh, something doing a, a USB conversion of the baseband into a stereo sound card, 48 kilohertz sample rate. And uh, so nothing particularly new there. Um, but what is new is, uh, well this is baseband, but hang on, what, what happened up here between uh, the uh, RF connector here, which is your, your BNC, and uh, what's going on here? Well this is the neat bit. Uh, this is actually a, a, a DVB-T stroke DAB tuner, and it covers from 65 megahertz up to 1.7 gigahertz. has its own uh, uh, low phase noise oscillator fractional uh, uh, PLL and uh, it uh, also uh, will do the mixing for you uh, down convert to quantitative baseband it has selective filters at several level layers you can uh, adjust at uh, uh, right down to baseband the the uh, 
uh, bandwidth in a number of places. There's also uh, around about half a dozen different gain sections and you can control the individual gain sections all the way from the LNA, uh, front end LNA, uh, all the way down to, uh, to the uh, IF in several stages and as I say the filtering on there as well. Again you'll find a number of the components you can't see there. You can see the, the crystal there but uh, a number of the components are actually underneath the board and uh, they're there because uh, uh, it keeps the uh, uh, it keeps a nice uh, close path to the uh, chip itself uh, to the ground plane which is underneath there. And you might think to yourself, okay, well there's the end of the uh, RF cable, and there's the chip, uh, and it converts to baseband. And what is there between the end of that RF cable and the chip? Uh, well, I can tell you now, um, it's uh, simply a uh, one nanofarad. Uh, uh, AC coupling capacitor. That's all there is. There is no LNA on this device uh, other than what's on the chip. It's straight RF straight into one of the pins and uh, it gives you uh, baseband out. Okay, so uh, I've shown you that. Now let's see if we can move on to a real demonstration. But what I'm going to do is I am going to just plug this thing in and hopefully we'll be able to see it come up as a USB sound card. So let's just plug it in. Nice little bit, which sounds nice. Oh, and there we go. We have now have a USB audio device. Now, I want to just show you uh, what happens when I uh, actually try to, to receive it with a, a prank called Spectra View. This is uh, by Mo Wheatley. Uh, fantastic program. Uh, you may, if you have an SDR IQ or SDR 14, you may be used to seeing this. And this, by default, will actually just just hit the default sound card. Just so happens that this is the one I just plugged in here. Okay, so there we go. You can see there a, uh, a spectrum of uh, 48 kilohertz across. And uh, what I'm about to do now is uh, I'm going to go and uh, plug in my um, RF signal generator, which I happen to have here. And uh, there's some RF on here, so hopefully when I plug this in, and then I'm going to go and switch it on. There you go. So there you go. There's a nice little signal. And um, what I'm going to do just to show you this is this is actually real. Let's just zoom out a little bit, and if we can, and I'll show you the cable here is just going down to my uh, our signal generator there. And if I go and switch it off, like that. there you go. No RF, and switch it on again. There's RF. So that's good. We like that. Okay. Um, so this is at 145.924 megahertz. So I'll we'll just uh, go back to here. So that's quite nice. Uh, this is actually at about minus 107 dBm. So at the moment we're fairly uh, fairly sensitive. Um, you may be able to hear a little bit of clicking on there. Uh, I've got a little bug in the uh, in my sound card firmware on the PIC32, and it's uh, not quite working 100% yet. But uh, there you go. Uh, probably some buffer related issue that I haven't quite got right. But I'm just going to drop it down by another 10 dB to show that it's fairly sensitive here, down to minus 117. There you go. So it's still got a signal there. You can uh, still see it. There we go. That's at minus 117 dB. And you can see that that signal is probably around about 15 dB above the noise. Will it actually demodulate some RF? So for this, I got my trusty FT817. Okay, so uh, you can probably hear now. This is my FT817, and uh, I'm talking into it, and you can hear the uh, USB signal being demodulated uh, by our USB uh, funky dongle. Uh, what we want to do uh, further with this uh, is uh, be able to plug it into our software, which uh, allows us to perform the uh, demodulation and decoding of the telemetry from the FunCube satellite. And the idea is, is that if these dongles can be made for a reasonable price, which I, I should say that the, the total cost of the hardware parts for this, just for the chips, is around about £6. So that is the, uh, the FunCube uh, dongle. And uh, hopefully you've enjoyed my little video here.